Welcome back to the Movement is Medicine podcast. Dr. Gene Chirac right here with Dr. Megan Weezer. Dr. Corey, I heard everywhere how. Yeah. Is it because you're getting old? I think so. Hmm. I turned 30 actually a couple years ago and it's all, it's all <laughs> been from there. Yep. downhill ever since. I guess after I turned 31 was that 30 was okay. Yeah. Right on the break. And then it's funny how people keep moving those goalposts. Like it's, it's after I turned 30, 40, 55, hmm. 60, 62, that's, that's 62 a, and three fourths. That's not a bad problem to have. Turning 31. No. Oh, moving the goalposts. Yeah. Hmm. It means it all, it's all downhill from that point And then you move it further. I don't further. think it's ever all downhill. I don't like that phrase, all downhill, because yeah. if you're pushing a sled, it's easier to go downhill. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's hard to push a sled uphill. Yeah. That's so, a fair point. I don't understand it. It's all downhill? Yeah, it's, it's easier. You made, you, me, you've made it over the hill. Yeah. I think then, that, that's the point, is that you're on the downhill to death. Oh, yeah. The fast track. Correct. Um, <laughs> I don't like that saying because it implies there's only one hill. It it takes away the idea that there's constant struggles, adversity, and yeah, improvements guess. to get through. I think the moral of the story is life is hard because um, it's an uphill climb. Mm. That means hard, yeah. and it's all downhill from here. So what what part wasn't hard? Yeah, the up part. Why are you part? doing the YMCA right now? <laughs> He's <know>. high <laughs> <laughs> on life. Just feel like moving <laughs> high high on that hill that he climbed. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there's a lot of hills. There's a lot of ups and downs for sure. Um, but to to get to talk about today's point, which is by the way, this is like the fastest we've ever gotten to the point. I think on this podcast. Thank God we got all of our laughs. Uh, out <laughs> yeah, all there, there was a lot that happened before we started recording, um, mostly because of digital Corey and not actual Corey. Mm-hmm. Digital Corey is pretty funny. <laughs> the funniest person he knows. <laughs> um, let's talk about what we briefly alluded to um, 32 seconds ago, which is getting old. Getting older and aging. Um, I don't know about you guys. Like in, in my career, of all the things that I've heard that still kind of irks me a little bit, which is not a lot. Like I, I've been able to kind of accept a lot about people and how they perceive their bodies and health and stuff like that. But the one that's still kind of just paper Irks, cut, yeah. just a little paper cut, you know, it's not, it's not bad, but it's just annoying enough. Too soon. Mm-hmm. Too soon. Yep. He cut his finger. Yeah. My fingies hurt. <laughs> what a baby. It just doesn't end. <laughs> it just doesn't downhill. He's on the downhill. Yep. Yeah. From a fucking paper cut. <laughs> it was a razor. It was cut. literally a razor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. A razor cut. <laughs> That's no one stabbed you. <laughs> okay, Miss Jersey. That, that is not yeah, the that's barometer. the threshold <laughs> <Yeah>. from Jersey. <laughs> you to get shanked. <laughs> Don't talk about your problems until I see something <laughs> sticking out of you. If you ain't been shanked, you've had a good day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you were shanked, it depends where. That should be on a T-shirt, yeah. I think, okay. from Jersey. <laughs> back on the back on the hamster, back on the wheel. <laughs> Um, the, but the one, the one thing oh, that, we Googled that's still... it. Did we ever tell them what? that a hamster is about 80 calories? No, we 80 didn't. 200, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's right. Maybe we did look it right up. Now? Yep. Uh, which isn't, I said 100 calories. Yeah. So I, wasn't too I was surprised. Off. I thought there'd be a little more, but yeah. In yeah. our weight loss podcast, we talked about calories and he said something similar. And then yep. I said, what is the calories of a hamster? Yeah. So, so I think if you put salt and oh season it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> So if you season it well, that's 100 calories. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice little beef jerky snack. Does salt have calories? I'm going to leave. It I'm has to. Everything get has up calories. and leave. Because it has to. No, my, it, da- my Coke Zero has no calories. Salt doesn't have calories. Yeah. What does that tell you? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Aspartame. Aspartame. <laughs> Spartan? Okay, no! <laughs> Go! Where? Aging. Oh, right. Away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> aging away i don't want to age away uh, <laughs> that will be a sound bite um <laughs> the one thing that still irks me a little bit is, is the how people see themselves through the aging process and more importantly what they blame aging on aging uh which is yeah. a lot of things right people people have this context because it, it makes perfect sense because our brains work in narratives if we have a cause, we need an effect and vice versa. If there's an effect, then we have to work backwards for a cause. Meaning if I have pain, there has to be a reason for it. If I start to fall apart, 
there has to be a reason for it, even though seemingly arbitrary most times. Um, and aging gets blamed on that for most things. I feel stiff. I feel stiffer. I feel weaker. I feel, you know, it's, this is what XYZ. getting older is like strap in. It's like, no, this is what an activity feels like. That's right. Like, mm -hmm. but people don't make that <laughs> connection. And one of the, one of the behavioral psychology principles is external, um, blame people externalize instead of internalize. Cause it's a lot easier, right? It, yeah. it, it keeps away this, well, it this takes whole, away the control. It, it takes away the control and the blame, therefore, yeah. right? Blaming yourself. Um, so people are like, yeah, it, it's aging. I can't control aging. Therefore, I don't need to ask and blame myself for this, where I am now or why this is happening to me. So it's obviously aging. And, um, you know, I jokingly, people always say like, well, don't, don't get old. I'm like, well, it's better than the fucking alternative. You know, like, don't get old. So what, die? Like, right. what are you saying to me right now? <clears throat> So let's let's break this down. I thought this would be a great podcast for a couple of reasons. Number one, a selfish reason. So when people say something to me about aging, I can just send them a link to this podcast and say, <laughs> say, look, I'm not going to soapbox. <laughs> I'm not going to soapbox. I'm just going to link this to you and I'll soapbox in the podcast. So that'll, that'll be good. Uh, but the second reason, the actual reason, I think it'll be good to kind of talk through the aging process itself and what happens, what doesn't happen. And... Um, I think for, for a lot of this conversation, I think most people will be surprised by what doesn't happen because I think people's perception of aging is very different. And I'll start off. What do you mean what doesn't happen? With this. Like people think that they get significantly weaker or like their body starts to break down in a lot of ways, which is. No, nah, it does. They do. Not to the extent that people think. There okay. changes. I wouldn't say breakdown. Changes happen to the body. Absolutely. But yeah. breakdown is as much of a self-fulfilling prophecy and e even more so than the cellular change that happens in the body. Like, and to me, this, this comes down to there's a difference between getting older and aging people. Aging is a cellular process. Yeah. Right. Th what happens inside. And to me, like the analogy is almost like having tracking your biometric and then having an RPE. And there's sometimes a mismatch, right? Like if you are deconditioned, your perception of how hard you're working, your rate of perceived exertion, a lot of times is more than what actually happens physiologically because you don't have that connection of how that relevance of how hard you're working. So a lot of times for people, they are getting older <clears throat> because they feel older and they buy into this idea that I am getting older, whereas they're aging, well, then their physiological changes will adapt to their belief of getting older so let, let's talk let, let's unpack that a little bit first of all what are some changes that actually do happen as you age your muscle fibers shift like your type 2 and type 1 muscle fiber ratio changes i think it becomes more type 1 so from a musculoskeletal standpoint there is a little bit of for some there is a shift a, from fast twitch to slower twitch even though there's both there's always both yes. but the, the the ratio changes correct but and that can be manipulated via fitness. Correct. That can be mitigated. Um, the elasticity and stiffness of the muscle changes, right? You get a little bit stiffer. Um, that's normal. That can be largely mitigated. Sarcopenia, osteopenia. So we're going like we're going into the muscle cells. Um, that's good. What else? What you got? Go. Go. Now. Your chromosomes get shorter as they age. Um, maybe your chromosomes get shorter. The um, ends of the chromosomes are called telomeres. Mm -hmm. And every time the chromosomes um, proliferate or reproduce, those telomeres get a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter. And then once the they become too short and expose the DNA, that's when the sh cell knows to not reproduce anymore. And then the cell either succumbs to apoptosis, which is well, programmed, programmed cell death. Um, or there's another thing that I learned... It's like senosis, senescence, senescence. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and that's I liked it because it was talking about zombie cells. It's <laughs> like a, a cell that can't reproduce anymore that yep. normally dies, but it doesn't die; it just stays there. Right. Mm. So senescence is literally the biological aging process. That's you getting yeah. older because what you just described is probably the the latest and most believed or accepted um, scientific like biological process, process theory of aging. Of aging. I'm Which so smart. Is, <laughs> you keep cutting yourself. <laughs> um, wasn't that a thing back in the day? Remember they did bloodletting? What? Bloodletting. 
No. I don't think that was to make you smarter. Though. It is. It, oh, there oh. was a lot of, yeah. Oh. The, the Lancet, one of the most revered medical journals, yeah, I know. Is, is named after the tool that was for bloodletting. A Lancet what? Is really? A, yeah. Is a tool for bloodletting. What the hell? Oh, bloodletting was the rage. That was like the cure-all back at in that time. In like the 1700s. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of, you said the word Lance. Um, yeah. There's not a lot of people right now named Lance, but back in the medieval times, there were people named Lance a lot. <laughs> Are you kidding me right <laughs> yeah. now? He, he I deserves mean... that one. Give him, give him that one. Give him that one. Give the man that. He deserves that one. Um, <laughs> if you like that joke, like or subscribe to this. <laughs> give, the, give the man a subscribe for that one. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I deserve it. Um, back to the cellular stuff. The, the, the cellular theory of aging is, is senescence. Um, and, there was a cool study. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, go for it. We talked about ap- apoptosis, which is like programmed cell death. Yeah. Um, the cell has a, a lifespan that it reproduces so many times and then it dies. Um, and they did a cool thing where they took some cells and they watched it reproduce and they counted the, the times that it um, would divide. And then they froze them. So then they couldn't divide anymore. It slows it down, slows it way, way, way down. And then when they thawed those cells again, the cells remembered that they already produ- reproduced 20 times and that they know they ha- only have 30 more to go before they are programmed to die. Hmm. Um, so there are, it is a built-in cellular process that cells know when to move on and go from there. It, was yeah. it, it is interesting. There, There is probably the most prominent popular um, cell researchers, David Sinclair, and he, he had a big study that was like picked up by all major publications, Time Magazine and stuff like that. And what they found is that there's cell death, but there's cell muting, that the cells go quiet. And then if you can stimulate the, the epigenome to get those cells talking again, then you can quote unquote reverse aging. But that comes into DNA manipulation and stuff like that, which is which is not possible, but probable theoretically at this point. Um, all this to say is that aging in a lot of ways is reversible to an extent. So from from a DNA aspect, like if you get those cells that are muted but not dead, they're just essentially shut down mm-hmm. to reactivate, then you can stop the processes that are happening for a lot of people with aging. Even though for most, it again, it, it's happening because it's a cause and effect. Coming back to what we talked about in the beginning, there's a cause and effect. You get older, you expect, you have an expectation of dying, which is fair to say, right? It's inevitable. It's inevitable. Mm -hmm. So you accept that. And then as you get closer to that, based on what society tells you, you accept that more and more and you buy into what your body starts to tell you more and more. Few people question what, 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 what if, what if I don't have to buy into that? What if I can do things to live longer? And what if I don't have to die? Yeah. Right. Like nobody asks that question. Like we ask questions, what happens after death? And it's our brains. I think most people don't know this. Our brains are structured and designed to avoid the question of death early on in life because that prevents or that, that supports survival. So from, from a thought process, our brains don't allow you to think about death. And then when you do, you start to rationalize why you're not going to die. Right? I'm too young. It doesn't happen. Blah, 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 blah. But as you get older, you switch to a different stage of life and you start to start to reconcile death. You start to accept it and you start to get comfortable with it. But what if you didn't? What if you did? What if you had the baseline expectation I will not die. And for that to happen, here's what I need to do. I think if people approached it that way, obviously at this point, they're still going to die. But if you truly believed I am not going to die and you created a list of things you needed to do to do that, lifespan might get longer. But what will almost certainly get longer or better is the life quality. Like you still can't control when you will die, but the life quality would be exponentially better in that span. They're calling it the health span. I like that. Yeah. Rather yeah, than the lifespan, it's the health span. It's the the years of your life that you're spending without disease. <clears throat> Correct. So what you described, I think, is the latest theory. I that that's the one I've 
researched and looked into and largely buy into as well from, from a cellular standpoint. The craziest thing about the cellular theory uh, or DNA theory is that our thought process and our actions change our cells. Like it, that shouldn't sound crazy, right? Because if we exercise more, our cells adapt to that change. Well, our thoughts influence our behaviors and our behaviors, I think, are more so what influences like cell activity. Correct. Well, it's both. I mean, our thoughts literally change our cells. If we are scared and are in a stress fight well, or flight fair. reflex, yeah. Yeah. then our thought process changes hormones and yes. the stress on the cells, Yeah. which used to be an aging theory as well, the stress theory. There's mm-hmm. a wear and tear theory that that somewhat true, like parts of it. Um, but aging really does, of all things, start with the mindset. Right. Do you believe that getting older, meaning more time on Earth and the stress your body has accepted on Earth, that's getting older versus aging? Are your cells mutating, adapting, muting to the same extent that you think you've been aging or getting older? And it doesn't have to be one to one. You can change how old you feel and therefore change how your cells adapt to that. All right, so stress, your beliefs, things like that, your environment, your community, exercise, sleep, nutrition, um, obviously your status in life. But again, people, I don't want to put too much stake on that because people that are rich can still be incredibly stressed. And, mm-hmm. you know, affluence doesn't equal quality of life necessarily or cellular change. Um, but an overall well-being does, Absolutely. So I think that that's from a cellular standpoint, you can change how old you are yep. by changing the environment that you perceive yourself to be. There's something called um, biological age and chronological age in these research studies. Chronicle age is from, you know, when people ask you how old you are, mm-hmm. but they can look at uh, those chromosomes that I was saying and essentially determine the height of them and say, biologically, you are nine years younger because you've been exercising or whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever thing is there to try to extend the, the lifespan of that, I guess. Um, and alternatively is the opposite's true. You can be, I can be 30 years old, but biologically I could be 40. And that means my cells are a little bit shorter and they've aged quicker somehow for some reason. Um, And exercise is one of the things that can keep those chromosomes longer for longer for longer. Yep. Um, But it was interesting Mm. because there was no significant difference between sedentary people and mild to moderate activity. Really? People. It That's had surprising. to be higher intensity. Their definition of higher intensity is different. You know, it yeah. could be time or it could be right. weights, but um, higher intensity is typically better for uh, not reversing, but slowing down the aging, pro- aging process, I guess. Higher intensity is? Yes. If you really dig into the research of exercise and training, um, there's a lot of misconceptions and higher intensity or interval training typically is not just the best it's the only one that creates change Mm -hmm. Uh, for weight loss particularly the most important weight loss that most people don't don't even know exists is fat around your internal organs yeah Um, so that happens with uh, high intensity training Um, so long duration short intensity training for a lot of people is actually overtaxing on their central nervous system, their CNS. So they experience a lot of CNS fatigue and they don't have the same changes that they think. To me, to me that, this is a bit of a tangent, but to me, I believe that is from a health standpoint, the bigger issue creating a false positive that people think that they are being healthy by being active or training a lot. So they have this false sense of, well, I'm okay. And then something happens, whether it's cardiovascular, whether it's um, cancer, things like that. Obviously, exercise can't prevent that, but some some health event happens. They're like, I don't understand. I've been pretty healthy and active, but that activity doesn't translate necessarily to the changes they think 
will, but high intensity training does. Um, short duration, high intensity, a little bit more frequently tends to have a bigger benefit for people in more ways than otherwise. Not to say there's there's other benefits to running and other yeah. activities, tennis, sports, things like that, but yeah. not what people think. No, because like frailty is like a clinical diagnosis of frailty. Yeah. Um, that's where people are like too weak to do things essentially. Yeah. Um, so why not combat that and get stronger when you're younger yeah. so that you get frail later or maybe not at all for be- sure before you have your own programmed cell yeah. death? <laughs> well, that that's the thing. I think that's an important point. So cell death or cell muting, muting and death are inevitable at this stage. But what's not inevitable is the process to that point. So here's what I mean by that. You can start that process at 60, 65, and 70 and have a continuous breakdown of tissues because you believe you're old and that this is normal. Or you can fight that assumption and it'll still happen, but now you can shift that goalpost to have a much more potentially drastic decline maybe from 75 to 80 to 85 or 80 to 85. So that gives you an entire decade plus of high quality life that you don't feel old. And I think that's the biggest point and takeaway is that, yes, inevitably things will fall apart because cells will not have the same ability to mutate and change and adapt. But it doesn't have to happen for a 20-year process or 30-year process. It could literally happen in a fairly quick time frame three four five years so to me like to me later that, down the road he means correct. not not yeah 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 so instead of starting at 60 and going to 80 it could happen at 78 mm-hmm. right i'd rather have two very fast years of decline because of things i can't control like cellular change versus accepting that oh well you know i'm 65 or 32 or whatever <laughs> so yeah. that's it honestly i don't know how old i am i think i'll be 32 this year pretty sure yeah, I'll be 33 this year, so. And you're way older than me, so. <laughs> <laughs> From a cellular muting standpoint. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so how do we how do we get people to buy in into this? Like obviously we people go, "Well, I'm old." Or, "Man, I'm really stiff cuz I'm old." Or, "I cut my finger on the razor cuz I'm old." <laughs> you know, like people blame old for everything. Yeah, they do. Because they don't make the connection. The first thing my approach to it is I say you're only old because of your experience up to this point. Meaning when you go from zero to 25, you hardly ever hear 25 year olds or 20 year olds go, I'm freaking old or my back is sore because I'm old, right? Because they don't have enough experience. When you go from zero to 25, you just don't have that experience. Ask them if they're old. (laughs) They just don't have the experience. But when you go from 20 to 40, you're literally adding another 100% of life yeah. to that span. So the vast, the breadth of experience increases. And that's what people, I, I truly believe that's what people think is old is because they've lived more life. So they make that connection to it. They have more stress. They just have more lived on experience on this earth, but it's not getting old. It's just time on earth. That's it. Um, and they blame aging or getting older because they're not going to blame. Well, now you have a family. Now you're working. Now you're stressing. Now you're eating like shit. Mm-hmm. Now you're not exercising. Not as I'm nowhere sleeping. near as active as you were yeah. when you're 18, 19, 20. Yeah. When you're in school, you have recess every single day. You know, that's 30 to 45 minutes of play every day. Yeah. That you, then you, we have that here. We have we do. play time here. We do. That's good. A little too much. No. <laughs> keeping your guys. Yeah, we're keeping you young. Muting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, you're 32, but your like cells are 12 years old. Mine are? Yeah. My you're brain welcome. is eight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's definitely <laughs> playing too much. That's correct. <laughs> that is correct. So is your dietary choices. <laughs> That's getting better. How many vegetables did you eat today? Did that green yes. colored goldfish, goldfish count? That was yesterday. Oh. You had a green goldfish? Because he said I should eat something green. Oh my god! That's what you told me to do. Me? <laughs> you yeah. did say you'd more I green stuff. N- when did I say that? Probably at one point. Yeah, when he was talking about his health issues. Okay. Yep. 
I would probably say something like that. Yeah. But. Yep. And he took it to heart. He's a very literal person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what else would you give tell people if they're like, well, I'm getting because I'm old or breaking up, breaking apart because I'm getting old or don't get old or whatever variation. I don't know. My brain goes to like your tissues are still tissues, which means they're adaptive. Like in the example of like, oh, I'm too stiff or, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, this hurts now because I'm old. Like, no, it hurts because you're probably straining your tissues past their capacity. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Capacity and demand, definitely a go-to. Right. Give Increase your capacity so that the demand never exceeds it. Yes, exactly. In your daily life. Right. Least. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, so I things think... can change. It's just slower to change. Because this is this kind of a conversation I had with uh, Jack. Yeah. Yeah, it's important. I think two things that I usually say to people is control the controllables, and I think therefore I am. Right? That's saying if you truly believe that you're getting old, your body will adapt to that belief because you start to change and you structure your life to this feeling, this idea of I am old and your cells will accommodate that. Mm -hmm. um, and same thing, control your controllables. If you feel like you're getting old, what around you is making you feel that way? You feel your body stiff? Great. Let's figure out the capacity of your body and then change the man to it. Right. Um, if your work is sucking the life out of you, like to what extent? What do you, for yeah, what? how like, much I of that get can it. you change? I get it. People feel locked in. They have mortgages, families, things like that. They can't just uproot and get rid of work. Um, but on the flip side of that, people have mental breakdowns. People have health scares. And then they snap out of it and go, what the hell am I doing? And they yeah. literally do it anyway. They just need that such a strong change to go, wow, death is here, right? Their brain can't fight the and can't tell you the different narrative of don't worry about it. Death is a long time away. You're only 52. People live until 78. Mm -hmm. Like, you're good until they're, like, in the hospital bed going, oh, my God. It, it's Am actually I? possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or they see their um, their parents go through the decline or right. um, all the transitions there. That's that's tough to, to have somebody go through. And then they realize they're only 25 years older than I am. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I need to do something about it. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's never too late to start. Um, no. Even even the uh, people in their seventies, their cells can still build muscle. It, it just happens a lot slower, mm -hmm. um, but the, and that's fine. But any any little thing helps there. Yeah. With with the muscle stuff, it, it's twofold. S building is slower, but decline stopping decline is faster. Right. So like as you're getting older, you're naturally if you're sedentary, mm -hmm. cells change. They're not as elastic. Need more they get input stiffer. to elicit a change correct so we're naturally losing muscle mass because muscle is expensive you need to feed it with calories and you need to strain it to build it which people don't do uh, but if you start doing it regardless of the age you slow that process down a lot to to a lot of extent you can reverse it and build muscle obviously not to the same extent as you can before you're 55 and so but still there there's like that's when people think like oh i have my 30s and half of my 40s and that's it it's all mm -hmm. declined. It's not like your body will continue to build that well into your seventies for most people. Caveat being crazy systemic diseases, like muscular issues. Like, yeah, there's periphery of stuff, but we're talking like middle of the bell curve, mm -hmm. not the crazy people that are super jacked into their seventies and eighties who are probably on testosterone or some kind of growth hormone. Nice. And, <laughs> and definitely not the people that are, have, degenerative conditions, systemic issues, things like that, because that that's not a regular process. But for most people, but even those people, they'll benefit. But for most people, it's the benefits never stop, right? Until you you physically can't move, um, which doesn't doesn't happen until it's too late anyway. So th there's always there's always a an opportunity to change the aging process if you believe you're not old. And that, that, that to me is like the best way of saying it is aging is adaptable to your belief of getting old. So it's about combating that idea for most people, which is, which is pretty tough because you're, what you're essentially saying is you feel old because you're not taking responsibility for why you're feeling this way. And it has nothing to do with your age. Tough pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. Yep. What's the best? What's the best medicine for aging? 
testosterone. Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, exercise. That's right. Exercise. Fitness is the cure all that is accessible to everyone, yet most people don't utilize it. And that, that's the great irony of, of this all. It's like we, we have the evidence, we even have the strategy in place, but people are like, it's too hard. Yeah. It is hard. Look at Gene's shirt. Sometimes you have to embrace the suck. Of golf, though. Oh, that's golf. Yeah. And but you uh, have to embrace the suck. Yeah. We, we see this all the time. <laughs> Mid workout, people are like, oh, this is awful. And then afterwards, they're like, that was a good workout. That was the best like, thing yeah, ever. Yeah. Yeah. You, sometimes you have to get through a little bit of hardship to reap the rewards. Yep. Yeah. But we're essentially saying, here's the red pill, here's the blue pill, here's death. <laughs> <laughs> here's 15 here's, minutes of exercise a day seriously yeah. right like and people are like yeah i'll take this one yeah uh-huh <laughs> like mm, oh that one requires work sorry yep but it, it's it's the, again it's it's that human piece of it I, i'll take the later and deal with the consequences later mm-hmm. yeah and i'll yeah. be fine like we have this false sense of security because again our brains will not allow us to think of death ironically enough because our brains are designed for survival and people are like, well, exercise is kind of hard, and I don't want to do it that waste energy. And then they're like, I'll take death. Yep. Sure. But it's not happening for a while, so it's okay. We fail the marshmallow test every single freaking day. <laughs> yep. I will not take two marshmallows of life. I'll take the marshmallow of death now. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> <laughs> who wants marshmallows? Um, I want s'mores now. Hmm. S'mores no. are, yeah, s'mores are delicious. Super Thank sweet. Mm-hmm. They're what? Super sweet. Like, super sweet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you? Are you a s'more? He's calling me super sweet. Okay. I think it's because I was looking at him as I was saying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other thoughts on aging? Do you guys want to share? No. I don't like this subject. Why? Because it's not interesting to me. Really? Oh, I think it's fascinating. You work with Senior Strong. What do you mean it's not I interesting? I mean, it's to interesting, you? <laughs> but like in the realm of what you were talking about, like I thought we were going to talk about like bone and muscle changes and stuff. Sure. Share some bone and muscle changes. Well, you already did. You didn't say anything about bones. I said osteopenia happens. And then there's this like, do they call it osteosarcopenia? Mm-hmm. Like the Ooh. simultaneous. Mm hmm. Both. Sounds bad. Change of, yeah. So loss of sarcomeres, muscle, and osteophytes. Yeah, that that's um, osteopenia, which is the softening of muscle. It's a precursor to osteoporosis. Mm-hmm. Um, for the longest time, the best course of action. Softening of bone. Did you say muscle? I think you said muscle. I softening bone. of bone. Yeah. The, for the longest time, right? Calcium supplements, things like that, were a go-to, and they still are. They still and are. You loading. need like. The formal treatment for osteoporosis is is like a it's an and situation. It's like exercise and uh, medication. Yeah, but exercise wise, for the longest time, it was walking, loading, right? They Getting still those fucking suggest that. It yeah. drives me un- bonkers. And yeah. then they're like, mm, "No, you shouldn't lift weights." It's right. like, "Do you know anything?" Mm-hmm. Right, and that. That's... Do you know anything? No. The, they don't know anything. The, the people anything. with the highest bone density bone density are weightlifters. And why yes. is that? Huh? Why is that? Wolf's law. What is Wolf's law? Go. Go. Now. It's uh, bones adapt to the forces that are put upon it. Yes. Right. Right. And one of the biggest forces is when tendons muscles pull yank on, on the tendons. Yeah. And the muscles tendons yank pull on tendons, bone. tendons pull on bone. Bone says, wow, I got to lay more bone down. Yep. So you have... Compressive force, which is what happens when you walk, then you have tensile force, which is tension, and then you have that contractile force of the bone pulling or the tendon pulling the bone. And when you combine all of those, particularly with strength training and then loading, that's when you have really healthy, strong bones. Um, and they people... always recommend like low impact, but to a point, you need higher impact to yeah. elicit those. Well, it, it, for most people, again, it, it depends, right? It depends on the level. Yeah, it depends on the level. But course. people with osteopenia, like when they, they don't have osteoporosis yet, yeah, they usually don't have any restrictions. It's like, just, you know, be cautious because you're in that l- low, normal range, but you don't 
not really danger zone yet because you don't have the soft. Right, you're not going to like thing. sit down or put a barbell on your back and automatically get a compression fracture right. in your spine. Like, right, it's so not, you want to build way. those up uh, with both contractile, tensile, and um, loading forces from ground um, ground reaction forces and stuff like that. Okay, so that's bone. We talked about muscle. What else were you expecting? I don't know. How about hormones? Testosterone is one that I get asked about a lot as you get older. Is your testosterone going to change? That's out of our scope. I don't know. I mean, he's talking about testosterone left and right. You said testosterone. Did I say testosterone? Yeah, you said the people that are jacked out of their minds in their 70s. Because are... they're taking growth hormone yeah. and testosterone. Yeah. Um, for most people, testosterone doesn't change um, until into their 60s. Um, now, again, the caveat is, unless there is some kind of pituitary hormone deficiency going on, if you're, for the majority, it, it's fine. Um, exercise, high-intensity exercise has shown to change testosterone levels in people. Um, I think most people don't know, like most people think guys have testosterone, women have estrogen, and that's it, but both have both. Mm -hmm. There's always both in males and females. It's just the levels are slightly different at any one point. Um, so that's okay for most people. What else? I don't know. Vision changes? Mm-hmm. Your... Vestibular. Ooh, like, vestibular, yeah. Yeah, vestibular Balance. system, just like reactivity changes. That That's a good one to touch because that's that is something that does happen um the balance piece of it that that's yeah. pretty important to talk about i think we can finish with balance um so our our joints are loaded with what's called proprioceptors right our, the ability to process movement in where space. you are yeah um and our ankles have the biggest concentration of that right our tel telocruel joints um as we age proprioceptive ability or proprioceptive levels go down because our ankles get stiffer. So ankle range of motion is really important for balance initially. So as we get older, the proprioceptive number is higher in the hips. So if you see people that are elderly, and one of the reasons they, they fall a lot. a hip strategy than an ankle exactly. strategy. And what that means is their base of support gets wider. So if you push somebody now, their ankles hinge back and forth and they stay much closer to the center of mass and they they can balance themselves if you push somebody that's older or has less proprioceptive ability yes don't do that <laughs> don't don't push old people <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah no don't don't push old people. um their hips shoot back and their chest goes forward and the center of mass yeah. is so much greater and it's harder to stabilize from that so the answer is obviously keep maintaining ankle mobility and challenge your balance so a lot of times people don't right people limit their range of motion more and more and more or overall uh, capacity over as we get older again buying into this mentality well i'm older so i'm stiffer this is normal it sucks i'll complain about it don't get older blah 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 we're back to where we started and they're like my ankles are stiff my knees are stiff my back is stiff everything is stiff i'm getting older here comes death <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that is not the, of all the things, that is absolutely not the case, right? You see this every freaking day at Senior Strong, or at least yep. three days a week, right? Like proprioception can be changed. You can change ankle strategies. You can change the mobility capabilities, um, in most joints for, for most people. Mm -hmm. Arthritis is a, no here, here's, here's the biggest yeah. thing. I know we've seen, we already talked about this a lot in earlier podcasts and I yelled about this. What are you about to say? Arthritis is a normal process. It is not a scary, horrific thing that happens. But there's an inflammatory component to osteoarthritis, they found. Yes. So there's a controllable piece to it. Like, yes, it is a normal part of aging, but there is an inflammatory process that happens. In acute instances, not a consistent inflammatory I'm process. I'm just saying it can be mitigated by, like, you know, Maybe not eating processed foods all the time, then you shut your mouth. decreasing inflammatory input. Corey, your mouths. No, uh, tomatoes are inflammatory, right? No. No. I don't like tomatoes. <laughs> what I'm trying <laughs> so to say is... So don't eat tomatoes then! Ew. <laughs> um, arthritis? Yeah. Higher prevalence in sedentary ind individuals Isn't than active crazy? individuals. 
People yep. f- assume it's wear and tear. It's not. It's totally That's not. That's where my inflammation piece yeah. comes yeah. in. You have, you're much more likely to have knee and hip arthritis if you're sedentary than if you are if you're active. And think about the other behaviors of sedentary individuals. Like, they're probably not eating the best. They're not moving. Like, there's mm-hmm. an inflammatory process Here, going on Here's there. the catch-22 with this. People that are sedentary obviously are sedentary for a reason. And they haven't exercised and they don't like exercise. But they know exercise is good for them and then at some point they they start to exercise and then that inflammatory process kicks in because capacity and demand is way off mm-hmm. and people are like self-fulfilling so exercise i knew is i was bad. right this is yeah. horrible i knew i shouldn't have done it oh, God. and they yeah. just did it one time right and, and it can be something as simple as somebody who works you know 10 hours a day at a desk job they average 2000 steps a day and they heard on the internet that 10,000 steps yep, is, and then all of a sudden they're going from they go two from to, two to ten yeah. that's a five-fold increase in activity mm-hmm. your body's not ready May, maybe maybe not ready for that and no. then you have a flare-up or yeah. whatever and symptoms. then it's all of a sudden no walking isn't good for yeah me. walking's like, bad no for me. you yeah. increase your body's load by 500 yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah like yeah they're like yeah i'm too old for this shit like, yeah <laughs> it's like <laughs> <death>. actually yep. <laughs> <laughs> like quick what color casket you want <laughs> yeah what the hell? <laughs> we took a turn, but I mean, we're driving to point home point point home here. Yeah, I mean, embrace the suck a little bit, get a little bit more realistic, right? Gradual progression, and then you'll be you'll reap the benefits. Like you got to think in ratios here. If you take eight to twelve weeks of challenging out of your comfort zone to give yourself eight to twelve years, like if you think of it in those terms, it's a no freaking brainer. Yeah, like it really is. And uh, for more numbers, um, there's this older adult strength training study where it was eight to 12 weeks or whatever of moderately intensity, moderate intensity weightlifting. um, And they all got 25 to 35 percent stronger compared to the control group, which got like five percent weaker (laughs) in in that three months. Yeah. Um, So like. Even, what gives? Yeah, what gives? <laughs> Even older individuals can still get 25% stronger in, in a short amount of time. Yeah. Humans are going to human. Um, all right. That's that. That's a lot of hopefully we de-aged you in 45 minutes. Uh, but it, it really is. Like if you take this to heart and you, and you fight this idea that I'm getting older is inevitable. Yes, aging is inevitable. But the rate of aging and the pace of aging is not inevitable at least in the rate that you think it is um older is is very much a state of mind and lifestyle much more than aging processes so if this helped let us know leave a comment below let us know your thoughts uh like and subscribe of course uh i'm sure we'll we'll have some level of follow-up on this there there's a lot to cover uh but let us know what you think hopefully that helped you uh shave some years off your life or add some years to your life uh depending which which thought process you accept (laughs) um and as always let us know. Leave a, leave a comment below. Subscribe, like, wherever you're watching this. And uh, we'll catch you again on the next episode of the Movement is Medicine podcast from Recharge.